I am traveling back to America for the first time in over a year, in two days, to see my family for the holidays. And I have been in full preparation mode for over a month now, just so that my mental health is stable when I am back in America, when I'm around family 24 seven. And this is something that I help clients with every single year. The holiday season is always really busy and crazy. And we're spending a lot of time essentially with our triggers being our family. And I'm really passionate about how I take care of myself in that time. For context, I'm Sarah. I'm a health and life coach for women who want to have better body image, more confidence, and just take really good care of themselves. And I moved out of America almost two years ago now. I moved to Bali, Indonesia. It's where I am right now. And I'm traveling back home to see my family for the first time in 14 months, in about 48 hours. And it's a big deal and I've been prepping. So I wanna share how I teach my clients to do this, how I've been doing it myself, how I go home, spend a lot of time with family and am not taken control of by my triggers, by negative mindsets, by an environment that is honestly not the healthiest, hasn't healed, how I don't, fall backwards or lose touch with myself and I'm able to actually use these experiences to continue to move forward, love my family, but also love myself at the same time. And so this is for the person who is maybe heading home for the holiday season or regardless of the time of year that you end up seeing this at, but the person who wants to spend time with family or with friends who might bring up some shit and you don't want to feel like you're losing progress in your growth, in your healing. You don't want to feel like you're moving backwards. You don't want to end up in, you know, the same arguments or the same bad patterns that you used to be stuck in. And I'm going to tell you how I do that. So I have heard from so many of my friends living in a place that is very diverse, has people from all over the world who have left their home countries, that when we go back home, we regress. We act like we're 16 again, we're back in our parents' house, and we go a little bit crazy, we don't act in the way that we want to act, that our current self acts, and a lot of that is the environment, but a lot of it is our internal environment as well. So I want to teach how I work through my triggers around family so that I still have a stable body image in a, in a household or in a family or a culture that has very specific opinions about how you should eat and how you should look, how I have stable mental health, even when I'm in an environment where people maybe can't or don't know how to respect my boundaries or just don't care to, um, who don't take the setting of boundaries well. That's always awkward with family. Um, and how I don't fall back into those negative habits or mindsets that I used to have. For me, that was an eating disorder, many eating disorders for years. That's dieting, that's comparison to my sister, to my family members, to the people I went to high school with that I'm going to run into. It's not people pleasing or worrying like what people are going to think about me when I share my true self. And it's not being afraid to set those boundaries and speak up for myself, but also knowing how to do that in a way that doesn't cause like a blowout fight at Thanksgiving because someone decided to bring up politics. That is a very specific example from my life that will be coming up very soon. It is inevitable that my family will talk about politics at Thanksgiving, even if we're all on the same side of the, the conversation, it ends up being a thing that some of us don't want to talk about. So there is a very specific model that I'm literally going to draw for you and show you how to understand your triggers in a way that allows you to actually see them as something that you are not trying to avoid or something that you're afraid of feeling. I hear this from clients a lot, no matter their age. My clients are, you know, in their 20s, but they're also in their 40s and 50s and 60s and we all have a mother 
or a family member or an old friend that triggers us. Let me just say that. Um, so seeing your triggers as something that can actually be positive and that might seem like a stretch if you're someone that's easily triggered by your family members, but there is actually a way to experience your triggers without them taking control of you, setting you back, or being something that's really painful and uncomfortable. And so what I'm gonna share with you that I'm gonna use my really talented art skills to illustrate is what I call the healing spiral. And this is something that someone shared with me years ago at a retreat that I was attending at the time in Costa Rica. And they shared this perspective of triggers and healing that changed my life. And that's what I want to share with you today, but we have to draw it. After I do that, I'm going to show how I work through my triggers in real time. But let's start with our healing spiral. So bear with me while I draw. I'm not an artist. We have this feeling when we return to an environment or a relationship that is triggering that we are spiraling right? We're going backwards. And so if we have this spiral that I'll draw and then I'll show to you, if this is our spiral here, beautiful, right? I'm such an artist. This is our spiral. We feel like when we are re-triggered by the same thing, by the same person, by the same conversation, that we fall into this spiral. And in our heads, this lowest point is actually our worst version of ourselves, our most unhealed or unhealthy version of ourselves. It's where we don't want to be. So this is how we see being triggered. If I have this trigger, I'll fall into the spiral and I'll get stuck down here and it'll feel really bad. However, I want to change our perspective of this to see that our triggers actually don't control us. And so in this mental spiral that we fall into, let's say that this trigger comes up every now and then. Let's say that every time you see that one family member, your mom, your aunt, your grandma, whoever it is, it's a little bit of a crooked line, but this trigger comes up. So in our spiral, it's hitting at this point, this being our experience, this being the trigger, it's happening here. Oh, we come around again. It happens again and around again. It happens again. Every time we fear that it's going to get worse or it's going to be too overwhelming. Maybe you're spending a weekend with your family and you know that every time they talk about food, it's going to make us spiral more and more. However, the way that we change our perspective on this is that we view this spiral no longer as negative and something that we fall backwards into but something that is actually bringing us to our truest self. And the way that we change this spiral from being negative to positive in experience is we change our mindset, which is what I'm gonna teach you to do after this, but I just wanna give us the visual first. So at the bottom of this spiral, you actually have your truest self. And at the top, you have where you are now. So it looks like this, where you are now and your truest self. And so by flipping this from where I am now and where I don't want to be because of the trigger, making this something positive, it can become a learning experience. And I'm not saying that you have to experience your triggers and just like look on the bright side. No, 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 no. We need to, we need to have a strategy to feel through this. But this is how I enter situations where I will inevitably be triggered. And instead of them controlling me, I'm in control. So the whole perspective here is that every time, maybe I can do this, we come back to that trigger point, we actually heal it at a deeper level. So let's say that this right here is Thanksgiving of this year, or it's seeing your ex for the first time after the breakup, or it's seeing your ex best friend at the grocery store unexpectedly, whatever it is that triggers you. Someone comments on your body, somebody comments on your career. It happens. If we process our triggers correctly, which we'll learn how to do in a moment, proactively, I revoke me saying correctly, but proactively, the next time it comes back around and we hit it again, we will heal it at a deeper level level and then it'll come around again we're going up and down because of our spiral you'll hit it at a deeper level 
and on and on and on, hitting every single time you hit that trigger until you get to your truest self. Now with the right approach, every time you hit the trigger, again, it's not more traumatizing, it's more educational and it gets easier and easier. That's our healing spiral. That's how we embrace the difficult emotions in life, the difficult experiences, the trigger points as something that can actually be positive. True happiness is not avoiding ever feeling negative. True happiness is feeling all of the emotions and knowing how to cope with them. So let's talk about how we can do this. My legs are falling asleep. I need to change how I'm sitting here. So how do we process our triggers so that it is a positive experience and not a negative one? Obviously I have a list for you. This is what I've learned myself has been so insanely helpful. It's what I teach clients and they find so much value in. And I'm gonna give you a real time example so that when you're with family, when you're in these hard moments, you can protect your mental health, your food mindset, your eating disorder recovery, your growth journey, your learning to be less of a perfectionist or people pleaser, whatever it is that you are on the quest of. These are all things that I help my clients with. You can protect that and make your, your trigger a positive experience. So first things first, when you feel that trigger, I just want you to slow down and figure out what the thought is. So for example, I know that I'm going to feel triggered when I go home because my family is going to probably comment on my body and they're probably going to comment in ways that they, they think are positive maybe um, about the weight that I've lost, which has been unintentional in my experience. It's just the result of my body changing and my lifestyle changing. It's not a reflection of if I'm healthier or better now. Whole other conversation. I can't talk about body image right now. There's too many things I could say. That's a video for another time. But maybe that's what the comment is going to be, right? Like, oh my God, you look so much healthier and what they really mean is that i look smaller although this would be a compliment in their eyes this is triggering for me because i have spent so long in my life just trying to not care what my body looks like i've been sp i've spent so long just trying not to care how much i weigh or what other people think of my body and so what i have to do in this moment <sighs> is take a moment and say to myself what is the thought behind this? And the thought behind it is what I just said, is what my body looks like matters. So first step, understanding what my thought is. The second step I take is understanding the feeling behind it. So the thought is in our mind, the feeling is in our body. And that's why we might feel anxiety, it's why we might feel stress, it's why we might feel anger or frustration or sadness but I want us to get really clear on what that feeling is because oftentimes we might feel it, but we don't name the feeling. And a lot of times, especially with anxiety and stress, but all emotions, they just wanna be acknowledged. They are there as cues, as messages to you. And we so often just try to avoid them and not listen. So simply naming the feeling, feeling the feeling, just sitting with it for a moment, being like, okay, I'm feeling anxiety and I feel it in my chest. That helps us release it and feel it so much less. So name the thought, name and feel the feeling. And then the third step is to ask yourself where the earliest memory that you have of this feeling is. And the example that I gave of comments on my body and feeling like my family cares what my body looks like really makes sense because I have a memory of being six or eight years old, I think about eight years old, and realizing for the first time that my family did care what my body looks like. I was in that stage of girlhood where I'm not this little string bean toddler anymore. I am between being a toddler and puberty, and I am a little bit chubby. Like I'm a chubby kid. A lot, of, a lot of kids are chubby, and that's just normal. But I asked for a snack, 
And I was re reminded by a extended family member that I had a limit on how much I was allowed to eat and drink, how much I was allowed to consume. And I believe at the time that that was more my parents, like trying to be mindful of making sure I was just eating a healthy amount and also having a financial consideration because we didn't grow up with a ton of money and food costs money. And when you've got kids, kids are expensive. But this extended family member, they said to me, like, you have a limit because you're getting a little bit too big. And that's the first time I remember having these feelings of frustration, of confusion, of sadness, of shame. The same feelings I feel when as a 26 year old, my grandma makes a comment about the fact that I've lost weight. Either way, I feel the same feelings. I have the same thought of what you look like matters. And if you don't look a certain way, you should feel ashamed. You should feel embarrassed, you should feel guilty, you should feel angry, you should feel bad. And it brings up all of these same feelings. So once we've taken these three steps, understanding the thought, feeling the feeling, and remembering the first experience with this feeling. Also, when you first start doing this, your first experience or memory of the feeling might be last week. It might be six months ago. It might be when you were 21. Like it might not be very early on like it was for me. I've peeled these back over time. I used to not be able to remember my childhood. Now this is a lot easier. Once you've done that, we are sending so much love to that version of yourself. Every time I think about my eight-year-old self, I think about this memory because it's one of those turning point memories I had that gave me this belief for so many years that what my body looks like matters. And so what I do is I keep photos on my phone of myself when I was a kid. I ask my parents what it was like when I was a kid. Like, what was I like as a child, you know? And through that, I've really been able to understand that version of myself better. And then every time these things come up, I send that version of myself so much love. And that is how you accept your body, accept yourself in the present, is you accept the version of yourself that you have been taught to dislike or reject for your entire existence. That's how we make a trigger a more positive experience. That's how when we're on our healing spiral, we want to get here. We're not afraid of getting here. Going through this is just part of the process to become our truest self. And that becomes something that is positive and exciting and we have control over because we know the steps that we need to take. I teach all of my clients how to do this. Being triggered in itself does not have to be a negative experience, but you will feel helpless and consumed and controlled by your triggers if you don't have a way to process through them. That's how you take your power back. Every trigger is an opportunity if you see it as one. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a time where you set a verbal boundary with somebody else, where you have an amazing breakthrough. Simply learning how to sit with yourself and show yourself a little bit of compassion when you might not receive that compassion or that understanding of yourself from other people makes experiences with your triggers. Maybe that's the holiday season. Maybe that's every time you see family. Maybe that's in a totally different area of life. It makes it a lot more positive. When I go back to America and I implement this and I practice it, I'm going to have to give myself so much compassion and it's just a learning experience. It's just practice. So I'll be carrying you along with me through that experience. And I am going to be giving some really honest updates on how it's going because it's not always easy. And sometimes we're going to respond and react in ways that we're not the happiest with, that we're the most proud of, but we'll be in it together.